This is the match that began three weeks ago and finished after just six minutes in the shadow of disaster. Thousands present on that haunting occasion are here today. Many of them, one suspects, were initially against this cup semi-final ever being resumed. A great number felt that way. But those whose decision it is to play on are the right people to make it. Liverpool Football Club in consultation with those families who suffered in that disaster. So it's play on for Liverpool, the club which has behaved in exemplary fashion in every way over the last few weeks. And they've already given notice in last Wednesday's Merseyside derby that their performances for the rest of the season will in no way be diluted. They'll be as competitive as ever it's the only way for them to play the game. Good afternoon. A one o'clock kick-off here at Old Trafford today for the semi-final, which always promised to be a classic until the hand of disaster intervened. But no reason at all why it shouldn't be a classic uh, here today. And it will be decided today. If it's level at full time, it'll go into extra time. And if it's still level then, well, penalties will decide the outcome for the first ever time in the FA Cup uh, competition. So Nottingham Forest or Liverpool to play Everton at Wembley on May the 20th. The first ever cup final for Brian Clough or an all Merseyside affair. The story is about to unfold once again. But first, Tony Gubber's been keeping an eye on the preparations for this highly significant match here in Manchester this morning. The spacious concourse around Old Trafford stood empty and waiting at nine o'clock this morning with the home of Manchester United well signposted to accommodate two sets of visiting supporters. Liverpool and Nottingham Forest given equal allocations of 24,500 tickets for the reduced gate of 50,000. The first coaches to arrive carried a few of the 800 policemen who it's estimated will be on duty for the semi-final, although the police declined to confirm the exact numbers but it is thought to be more than double for a normal match. Liverpool's terrace allocation is at the Stratford end, behind the perimeter fences, which Manchester United are not removing. Although all 29 gates leading onto the pitch will be unlocked and open throughout the match, with policemen in attendance. Police control is from their normal observation post, but special arrangements demanded today include no alcohol on sale anywhere inside the ground, extra medical facilities and a counselling room manned by social workers. This poster is displayed at every gate, but when they opened at 11 o'clock, two hours before the kickoff, there were barely a handful of fans waiting to come inside, visible proof that the game will be played well under capacity. Well, paradoxically, the special arrangements we've made are to stand by a tried and trusted plan in the main, but uh, I suppose there are one or two things that are slightly different. Because of the very special circumstances of this game and perhaps uh, feelings that there might be on the terraces, uh, we're, we're certainly putting more policemen on the terraces with the fans to give a feeling of security, we hope. And we're keeping all the perimeter gates open so that people don't feel for this game anyway, that they're too enclosed. Mm. But in general, we're, we're standing by the procedures that we have used here over many years. The two clubs have returned this morning some 10,000 unsold tickets, and the atmosphere outside the ground has been subdued and thoughtful. At Hillsborough, I thought Forrester got a chance to win, but now I'd, somehow I think everybody's going to be for Liverpool, and uh, we're just turning up to make numbers up. But then again, it's like everything else, life have got to go on. You've had your period of mourning, all the dead are buried, I hope, and uh, you pick up the threads and carry on. Are you looking forward to the match or not? Oh, certainly, yeah. Yes, yeah. It's yeah, best yeah, if the results are right for Liverpool. <laughs> <laughs> we had a, a, good, uh, a good evening at uh, Everton, which seemed to relieve a lot of the tension. And so we've come here with the, the view to have a, a good, relaxing afternoon, and hopefully we get the right results at the end of it. Off when the teams began arriving for the match which would be difficult for spectators, for players and the two managers.
Well, because of the circumstances of Hillsborough three weeks ago, it was entirely inappropriate to show you how a team got through uh, to this year's Wembley Cup final. Everton, of course, did the trick. I dare say very few of you have seen how they did it against Norwich. Let's put that right, right now. Bowen, that's a good run by Crook. Patney, Rosario is in the middle. Up comes Dale Gordon. Oh, he struck it well. Fine strike, and he thought it was worth a corner, but he's not to get it. They've got caught a bit. Gordon had quite a distance to make. Sheedy was the player who came across. There was only one option, and I must say, I think Dale Gordon is right that he should have got a corner. Seemed to me to get two deflections. The first off Sheedy, the second off Southall. Throw. Bracewell. Oh! It was Crook! And it stays out. Now it's in. Pat Nevin getting the congratulations. Crook thought for a moment he'd escaped, but the little fellow was there. And among a few whirling legs, he managed to get the one which counted. Goalkeeper going one way, back off the angle. Sharp comes again off Crook. Bowen comes off the back line. And it's Nevin who has scored for Everton. Shows clearly from behind the goal. Sheedy, who got the touch there, came back off the post, in fact. And Johnny on the spot was, in fact, called Patrick. Into the last five minutes of the first half. Townsend! And Level South Hall just watched it go by. The only muscles that moved from the goalkeeper were those in his eyes. Rosario winning in the air again, but there's always cover behind. Bowen. It's well up by Ratcliffe. Acrobatic attempt by Malcolm Allen. Certainly got his instep all round it. Teasing little ball from Mark Allen, uh, from um, Bowen and Markham Allen with the instep, but Southall right in line. CD. Cutty! Good stop. Met it very solidly, Tony Cutty. Brian Gunn keeping Norwich in the cup. Fox got to find the right cross. Rosario, Crook! Well, brief highlights there of how Everton got through to this year's FA Cup final. It'll be their fourth of the 80s, which is a, a tremendous record. Now, we've just heard here that the kickoff is being put back to 1.15. Uh, clearly, the police are taking every precaution here. Uh, about crowd control under the circumstances. Uh, a large crowd outside, a uh, few latecomers obviously, and they've put that uh, back a little bit. Well, Jimmy Hill is with us as ever on these big football occasions. And Jim, uh, things have been learned from Hillsborough, and that's one of them, isn't it? Don't take risks in any way yeah. by putting the kick off at the exact time you want it if there's still a big crowd outside. Indeed, one of the, the, the tributes that we should pay to those who lost their lives really is to get things right in the future, and already, we've seen a circumstance where something has been learned uh, before any results of any inquiry are ever given. Um, mind you, it can't always be done because at the end of the day, uh, everybody realises that if you turn up late, they'll put the game back, you know, they, they wait the moment for coming to a game. So there has to be some discipline, but I think uh, they've obviously exercised that discipline today. But it, the stadium is not full, people are outside. If it were going to start now, what, 10 minutes time, they wouldn't have got them all in comfortably and at the right pace 
And so the police and the referee, because it's only the referee that can delay the result of a kickoff. Nobody else has that In jurisdiction. In consultation with the police, of Indeed. Yeah. But if the referee says it goes on, it goes on. So obviously the referee on this occasion has said, no, fine, we'll take that advice, let's put it back which only increases the excitement from our Absolutely. point of view because we've got to wait a little longer for the game. Absolutely. <laughs> More from Jimmy uh, in a few minutes about the, the build-up to the game and what might happen here this afternoon, of course. But let's just remind you how Forrest and Liverpool got to this stage, to the semi-final of the stage, uh, stage of the FA Cup this year. Forrest, incidentally, without conceding a single goal. Forrest's first three opponents were from the second division. On their own ground, they saw off Ipswich with a goal from Tommy Gaynor. And there was a fine volley from Lee Chapman to add to a Frank Yallop own goal, making it a comfortable 3-0. Then Leeds came to the city ground and were sent packing. Chapman scored the first. And Gary Parker made it 2-0. Then in the fifth round, Forrest travelled to Watford. Cars coming in. Wilson still there. So is Webb. That's his shot. It's in. Oh, and Chapman came close and it's 2-0. Still Carr. And still car. Laws! Oh, what a good goal! That victory presented Forrest with a more formidable hurdle. Manchester United at Old Trafford. Gary Parker gave them the lead. And referee Brian Hill decided that they were entitled to keep it, despite United claims that Brian McClare's shot did cross the line. Liverpool, starting at Carlisle, were already leading by a John Barnes goal when Steve McMahon cashed in. That was 2-0. And this is 3-0. Then came some lion taming at the Den. Peter Beardsley was on the bench, but John Aldridge set the tone for a 2-0 victory. And that took them to Boothbury Park, where Aldridge carried on the good work after Hull had taken the lead. Two waiting around the penalty spot. Barnes is over. Doesn't need the touch of Barnes. Aldridge has leveled the scores. Pressure still on. Aldridge! From McMahon. 3 2. So to round six and Liverpool's first home draw against Brentford. The third division side played well, but in the end could only admire the style of Peter Beardsley and John Barnes. Sinton under pressure from McMahon and Houghton and there's four Liverpool players on this break they don't get offside, it's Beardsley Aldridge is in the middle oh Beardsley brilliant, unbelievable Look makes the spare man Beardsley oh well that's how they got to this stage some fine performances from both uh, teams in the cup this year uh, now just to remind you or just to tell you if you've just tuned in the kickoff has actually been delayed here from one o'clock to 1.15 uh, the police want to make absolutely sure that the crowd is coming in in safety still some large numbers outside the ground and Jimmy uh, the interesting thing is that the crowd inside the ground have been told about that so they're getting the information right as well we have heard the announcement they're very patient here they're waiting for the kickoff as we all are at home and sitting here and, uh, you know, there's, there's, there's a lovely atmosphere, a delightful atmosphere here. Never mind the delay, no aggravation, just let's wait and see a game of football at 1.15. All right, for the moment, let's join Tony Gubber's got some more information for us. Tony? Well, Desmond, I've just been outside the ground and there are a large number of fans on the concourse still waiting to come in. But the official verdict from the police is actually they're not holding up the kickoff because of the numbers on the concourse. Apparently there's been a, a motorway accident which has delayed quite a large number of coaches. It doesn't involve any of the coaches, but that, coupled with some roadworks, has made about eight or ten coaches late. And the police have had a message saying those fans will arrive after one o'clock, and so they've delayed the kickoff because of that. 
Tony bringing us the, the very up-to-date information about that crowd control, etc., and the delayed kick-off here till 1.15. Now, of course, this uh, match is a repeat of last year's semi-final when uh, Liverpool just about squeaked past for us. Let's remind you of exactly what happened on that occasion because we've got a little bit of time to do it right now. Barnes. And here's Houghton and Barnes. They're appealing our Liverpool. They think that struck a Forest player, but uh, it was a lovely one-two. John Barnes started the move, combined with Ray Houghton, and he tried to finish it with a little curler. One or two shots from Liverpool players, possibly, hopefully, for hands. It's Gillespie's header. Beardsley, McMahon. Good play by Liverpool. Barnes is on the left wing, running past Chettle now. Well found by McMahon. Aldridge is in the centre. Still Barnes. Penalty. Penalty to Liverpool. Chettle was beaten by Barnes' run, and as he came in behind him, Barnes went down, and Liverpool have a penalty kick. Barnes broke clear from a lovely pass by McMahon. Chettle comes in behind him. Does he catch him there? It would seem that he did. And George Courtney pointing to the spot. And it's down now to John Aldridge. Who scores? Liverpool take the lead in the 13th minute. Unlucky for Forrest. But Aldridge scores there his first FA Cup goal for Liverpool, even though it's his 24th of the season and his 11th from the penalty spot. And as you see it again, he took one against Sutton last week in the league and he put it in exactly the same place. Aldridge not hanging around there, he went for the same side of the goal as last week. So, the side pursuing the double have struck first against the young pretenders. Kenny Dalglish then off to a flying start here. Well, whether it's in the Bernabeu Stadium as it was on Wednesday or at Hillsborough on semi-final day, George Courtney not afraid to point to the penalty spot for an offence like that. Spackman, Spackman through for Liverpool, goalkeeper out, and Steve Sutton did enough, it's a goal kick because the ball came off Spackman last, Barnes made that possible again, he threaded the ball through, and the midfield player running onto it, Nigel Spackman, doesn't often find himself in that sort of position, the goalkeeper made his impact by coming out at the right moment and forced the eventual ricochet to go wide. There's no doubt where Liverpool feel they can win this. John Barnes has made three or four telling breaks down their left-hand side. Clough. Played by Pierce. Club waits. Driven off Hansen. Half away by Spackman, only as far as Rice. And Wilkinson's in there with the header on. Couldn't quite find Webb. And Forrest bring both fullbacks into attack. That was Chettle. And Beardsley looking for Aldridge. A lovely flow to the match. Alan Hansen, an excellent interception. Houghton has got Beardsley unmarked on the left wing, but he goes for Hansen, who's made the run forward. Aldridge in the centre, Beardsley coming in from the far side. And Hansen's floater, perhaps uh, more of a defender's cross. But just a moment earlier, Nottingham Forest were in a good advanced position, and it was all down to Stuart Pearce, the captain, who got into a nice area of the field by the goal line. 
Ablett. Beardsley, McMahon. Ablett continued his run, it's McMahon again. Free kick, Terry Wilson. About 25 yards out. Aldridge runs across, Gillespie goes with him. It's left Nickel clear. Well played, Steve Nickel. Beardsley. Good effort, fine save. A memorable piece of football in the heat of the semi final action. Peter Beardsley. But here's Barnes on the far side. That's a goal kick. Peter Beardsley showing such an instinct there as to what was on. Steve Nicholl was left free by the rehearsed free kick. It came to Beardsley. And he was so fast to get his shot in, not much backlift, and Sutton knew where it was going. That was Wilkinson. Well, he looks happy enough. And I suppose uh, coming up to half time, the semi final looks very much as though. Liverpool are exerting their experience, whereas Brian Clough's young team have got to be commended for not folding. They've kept playing their football. And I think he'll be pleased too with a couple of saves by Steve Sutton. Liverpool supporters ending the first half on a joyful note. But there's been plenty to admire from both teams. John Aldridge's penalty, the only goal he was one of three players booked but Liverpool attacking with economy Nottingham Forest attacking on a broad front but it was that run by John Barnes that really made the difference between the two teams in the first half just following on the point about Brian Clough's youth policy Forest have already knocked Liverpool out of the FA Youth Cup this season to reach the semi-finals but today in the FA Cup semi-final, the senior side, inexperienced compared to their opponents, trail by one goal to nil. But they start the second half with a free kick. Foster has gone forward. Here's Chettle. And sliced somewhat by Gary Ablett. Wilkinson's in there with Foster, Wilkinson's for Clough! Oh, so close for Nigel Clough. Forrest within inches of equalising at the start of the second half. Wilkinson made it possible with the flick on, and Nigel Clough certainly got amongst it there, ahead of the red shirts. Warning for Bruce Grobelar in Liverpool. Beardsley. Foster's in there again. It's Rice to take it. Foster! They appealed at the linesman, the Forest players. They thought there was some uh, impeding in there, but uh, Bruce Grobelar stood where he was and caught the ball. Well, Liverpool calling on all their hardened experience. As Forrest start the second half in the ascendancy, but this is what happened before, Barnes, Aldridge is there, Aldridge! And exactly the same again, Liverpool come out of defence and snatch a vital goal, and again, Barnes involved, and what a volley from Aldridge! 52 minutes, Steve Sutton beaten by 
away. A decisive finish. And Barnes combines with Beardsley. What quality there between the two England players. And look at this for the volley. One of the best goals you'll see this season. And it comes in the midst of a hectic semi-final. And it puts Liverpool 2-0 up. And surely pushes them a little bit nearer to Wembley. And indeed, perhaps to the double, who knows? Rice for Forrest. Well, Liverpool masters at knowing when to strike and how to strike. And Kenny Dalglish will have enjoyed that goal amidst all the tension of this occasion. This was a classic goal. John Barnes and Peter Beardsley combining together. Barnes knew where Aldridge was, and just look at the way he put that away. So for John Aldridge now, 25 goals this season. Here's Hansen. Oh, look at Barnes. Walker will have to be quick here. Barnes is in, and Beardsley's in. And good save, Sutton, otherwise it was 3-0 and all over. But they just can't contain John Barnes, and Beardsley linking with him so intelligently. In fact, that's going to be a goal kick, but... Barnes form this afternoon, a testament to the extra dimension he's brought to the Liverpool team this season. Webb. Clough. And Webb again. Came off Ablett. And Gillespie away from Wilson. Not decisively so, this is Crosby. Play, throw into Forest. Wilkinson and Foster facing the thrower. Wilkinson. Oh, Hansen didn't get there. And it's gone in. Nigel Clough pouncing where it mattered. And the ball forced over the line after 68 minutes. The long throw knocked on by Wilkinson. A real mess there with Hansen. Nigel Clough got his foot in behind the number six and pulls Forrest back into the game. 2-1. And by no means over. Well, if you've just tuned in and you're wondering what on earth's going on, that, of course, was last year's semi-final, which Liverpool won 2-1 to go on and meet uh, Wimbledon in the final. Here, uh, today at Old Trafford, this resume match, it's been put back a little bit to a 1-15 kick-off. Uh, simply because uh, some of the coaches on their way here have been held up in traffic delays on the motorway. The police, in consultation with the referee, quite rightly, have decided to put the match back. As you see there, the, uh, the supporters here at Old Trafford are being well informed, both visually and by sound as well. And as we were saying, absolutely right to keep everybody informed. It's sadly what mm. times didn't happen at Hillsborough. Uh, three weeks ago. But let's look ahead to the match and look mm. ahead to the sort of the sort of mood that the teams, bearing in mind everything that's gone on in the last three weeks, the sort of mood that both teams will be in, Jim. Well, I think they'll have great respect for each other because they, they know the strengths in the opposition. They know it's going to be an extremely tight game today, so uh, nobody's going out there boasting about it. They, they, they know it's going to be the, a slender thread on which the result will hand at the, hang at the end of the day. Um, you could say that Forrest are you know, riding high because they've got a couple of trophies already, but I, I believe in things like peaks, and I think teams go up to a peak and then maybe just slightly over it, just the same as athletes mm. do. And I think that's the danger from their point of view, whether they can maintain that peak. And that canny Clough has sent them home for a, a week no to win rest. situation, though, doesn't yeah. he? And he's quoted as saying it's a no-win situation for Forrest he's, here today. He's had a lot of years managing, and he's learned wisdom and judgment, and he's also learned diplomacy. And you'll see that before matches, he always carefully thinks out what his public uh, uh, Image acclamation or, is mm, going to be. Mm. I mean, when, when a team comes to Nottingham, the, the manager's always one of his, the classic stylish managers and the team of the greatest in the world. You know, they doesn't, he doesn't give the team who they are playing, any reason to hate them and want to beat them any more than they do already. <laughs> so that's the kind of thing. We can't win today. Believe me, Brian Clough is thinking of winning. From the moment he got up this morning, he's thought of nothing else. He's thinking of three Wembley trophies in one season, which is a marvellous achievement. And he's thinking of the glory that will come to him and his family and his club as a result of that. So never mind what he says, that's the determination from that camp.
<laughs> I must say that the disaster of three weeks ago seems to have had a sort of salutary effect on both fans and footballers and everybody in the game for the time being. Uh, one hopes that it will last forever, of course. But the fans here today impeccably behaved, of course. I know that most of them weren't directly involved in that mm. three weeks ago. But one thing I spotted uh, an hour ago was that the players from both teams came on. They normally stay in their camps when they come on yes. the part before. The Today they mingle, show hands, they know each other, of yes. course. But that was well, nice. You see, the moderates, the majority of people in this country, love football as it is here peacefully, you know, no, no enmity really before the game. They've come to see the players perform, not to, not to act themselves, as it were. And what we have to do, we have to create a situation again following Hillsborough where the majority get their way. However they get it, that's what we want. Now that means parents have got to have their way in disciplining their children. We've, we, if we can produce that through the country, we'll begin to get football stadia with this, this kind of wonderful feeling before the start of the game. Friendship, looking forward to a, a, a game of football where we don't know who's going to win, nobody can predict it. That's, that was a British way of life of which we are very proud. And, and the only thing stopping us getting back to that is ourselves. Jim, here come the teams now. Kick off schedule for about five minutes from now. And the same two 11s uh, that began that uh, match at Hillsborough three weeks ago are playing. Team confirmation for you from John Watson shortly. There will uh, shortly be a minute's silence for uh, the victims of the Hillsborough disaster. And the same man is in charge of the match, uh, Mr. Ray Lewis. Silence impeccably obeyed. And now I hand you over to our match commentators, Trevor Brooking, and first, John Motson. So, in being ever mindful of its past, football now has to turn its face firmly towards the future. And let's hope this is a symbolic first day of a safer, more sensitive era. And let's take our first gentle step back towards normality by checking on the two teams. Liverpool field the side that drew so tigerishly at Goodison Park on Wednesday. Alan Hansen took another stride back towards full fitness, but Ronnie Whelan keeps the captaincy, and Hansen has said it should stay that way for the rest of the season. Ian Rush is sub there. Now Nottingham Forest reverts to the team which won the Littlewoods Cup and the Seamod Cup with Tommy Gaynor wearing the number seven shirt in preference to Franz Carr. In fact, Franz Carr isn't even among the substitutes. There are two young strikers there, Lee Glover and Phil Starbuck. And uh, Nottingham Forest, incidentally, have scored 106 goals in all competitions this season. And seven of those players are in double figures in their own right. Well, I suppose the main question for you, Trevor Brooking, is as a player, would you expect the two teams to be able to adjust immediately to treat this? as a genuine semi-final or are we going to have an inevitably subdued start? Well I think the noise of the crowd is a wonderful footballing atmosphere and I think once now the ball is at the players feet and they start kicking it around and once that whistle goes to start this match 
you then start concentrating on, on those 90 minutes or possibly 120 minutes ahead and I think uh, it is going to be such a, a closely balanced match that uh, really they, they will put those sort of thoughts behind them and concentrate really on the match and I'm sure hopefully it will be the classic that we always hoped it would be. I think everybody inside the ground would endorse that. I'm told by Martin Edwards, the chairman of Manchester United here, that the crowd looks like being around 39,000. Uh, 12,000 tickets, uh, it appears now, have been returned. More from Nottingham, I understand, than from Liverpool. But we're looking at a crowd of just under 40,000 in this uh, splendid Old Trafford arena. And uh, I think, looking back on that match I saw at Goodison, Trevor, um, it was clear that Whelan and McMahon in the centre of the Liverpool midfield were in terrific form. I suppose that will be a key area with, with uh, Ronnie Whelan there playing so well. And... Uh, McMahon alongside him, they were digging in so well for the ball the other night. Do you think that perhaps their battle with Webb and Hodge could be a, a major factor? It will be a major factor. I mean, there's confrontations like that all over the field, but certainly in midfield, Stevie Hodge darting forward, and then Neil Webb, you know, who picks out people so well. There's Stevie Hodge, who, who as I say, darts forward and really now playing alongside Webb rather than being stuck out wide on the left where he has played a lot of his football seems, as I say, to, to really have got back uh, all his form. And, and in midfield, Steve McMahon, Ronnie Whelan. Ronnie Whelan, I think, one of the sort of unsung heroes of Liverpool this season. And there's Brian Clough taking his seat in the stand. Yes, we must just underline, of course, that uh, Brian is still not allowed to sit directly on the touchline. And uh, he did come out about an hour before the start with Ronnie Fenton, who's next to him there, just to check on the best available seat in the director's enclosure. Uh, one or two other well-known faces there that those of you at home will no doubt be spotting. But the referee has come into the centre circle, Ray Lewis there, who was uh, in the same hotel as I was last night and in fact uh, spent some time with the police superintendent uh, taking statements um, from the incidents of three weeks ago. But uh, now Ray Lewis's mind is turned to the football as he calls the teams to the centre. Nottingham Forest all in white. Liverpool obviously in their familiar red and perhaps the most interested spectators of all among the many millions watching with you at home will be Everton who of course await the winners at Wembley a week on Saturday it has to be decided today as Desmond said at the start of the programme we could have extra time we could have a penalty shootout whatever happens we're bound to get some drama because this is the semi-final of the FA Cup and it is Old Trafford and it has started and this is Nickel. And Pierce is there for Forrest. Whelan, number nine, Houghton. Aldridge. Nigel Clough involved in his own half. Outside him, Gary Parker wearing 11. Nigel Clough wanted to get on with the throw, and Ray Houghton made contact with Nigel Clough. I don't think Ray Houghton meant to uh, hit him in the face. I think it was... <laughs> An accident, but uh, it certainly caught young Nigel in the eye. The, the referee has checked with his linesman. He's going to have a word with Ray Houghton. I think there's going to be a, a little apology here, which Ray Lewis will orchestrate. These two teams have two of the best disciplinary records in football. Flags up, that was Chapman and Hansen. It really is a good atmosphere inside the ground, Trevor. Well, the supporters are all in full voice, and I think an indication, early indication from Nigel Club that Nottingham Forest certainly wanted to start in a very brisk manner, the way he tried to take that throw in very quickly. That's aimed at Peter Beardsley. Aldridge is up with him, couldn't find Barnes. Number eight for Forrest, Neil Webb, Clough, Grubbala says that's OK. Nigel Clough, who scored in that semi-final that we uh, reflected on a little earlier last season. This is McMahon. Des Walker and Terry Wilson, a little bit of a tangle. Aldridge, offside flags up against Peter Beardsley.
interesting long ball that wasn't it from Steve McMahon early on it I think Liverpool might have noted a couple of goals that Nottingham Forest conceded against Everton in the Simod Cup last week and uh, interesting to see if they utilise that ball a little bit more than normal Carlton for Liverpool Pierce. The two sequences of the two sides are quite outstanding. Liverpool unbeaten in 20 matches since New Year's Day when they lost here to Manchester United. Nottingham Forest have won 23 of their last 28 games and lost only two since they were beaten at Old Trafford on Boxing Day. So we have got two sides here with a prolific run of form. This is Staunton. Steve Staunton, 20-year-old left back for Liverpool. Big occasion for him, did well. Hansen. Hansen at nearly 34. Houghton again. The long ball. That's searching out Johnny Barnes on the far side. He's free. Barnes, great save. Aldridge. A goal. John Aldridge. Liverpool in front. Fourth minute. And the long ball towards John Barnes. Fox, Brian Laws. They got tangled up. Two defenders in each other's way. And Barnes drove it. Brilliant save by Sutton. Really unlucky, the keeper. But John Aldridge, that's his instinct. That's his forte. And that's the lead for Liverpool. Foul. McMahon spoken to by the referee immediately. Trevor Brooking. Well, a terrible mix-up between Tommy Gaynor, actually, it was, who came back. He's conscious that he perhaps should be back there helping Brian Laws defensively with John Barnes, and they got in each other's way, and, and that's how it all developed. So, Forrest to go down in four minutes. Laws, Chapman. There was a, almost time seemed to stand still while that ball dropped from Aldridge's head, and everybody waited, and it dropped in the back of the net, and John Aldridge... Keeping Ian Rush out of the side, scores his 26th goal of the season. And it puts Liverpool 1-0 up, Des Walker covering. What a start for Liverpool. It was a brilliant stop by Steve Sutton. I feel a bit sorry for him, really. This is Staunton. And Pierce this time wasn't sure. Houghton. Oh, the whistle's gone. But as <laughs> keepers, sometimes they it comes out and it's not your lucky day, Trevor. It, it was a great save. Uh, as it drops down, John Barnes not going, realising he's not going to get there, and suddenly sees him pop up. Hits it with his right foot, and really John Aldridge reacted very well because it was behind him, and he just looped in. Well, that's why Aldridge's career scoring record is among the best of players anywhere in the game. It doesn't matter how you get them, as long as they go in. How? Free kick. In by Houghton. Barnes closes. Oh, it was Laws. Well, part of the rehabilitation of Liverpool has been the slow realisation on the part of Barnes and Aldridge that they could face playing football again. And they were both involved in that opening goal. Beardsley to Nickel. This is Houghton. And you just wonder whether this young Forest side, although they're growing in experience, just whether they'll have the resources to come back from that fairly stunning start. Mind you, they were one down to Luton, weren't they, in the Littlewoods Cup, and they came back to win. Tommy Gaynor, who got involved in that defensive tangle. The 
it wasn't the central defenders who were involved in that, it was the two players on the right flank who seemed to get in each other's way. So we had a late start, but Liverpool made up for lost time. And they've started in every way as though they really mean business. That's Nickel. Terry Wilson, number five for Nottingham Forest, the youngest player in the match at 20. Just a little bit younger than uh, Steve Staunton on the other side. Well, Ronnie Whelan, who's captain Liverpool so well this season, couldn't have asked for a better start here. Hodge for Forrest, Whelan got in front of him. This is Chapman. Barnes Staunton looking for Beardsley Staunton again Barnes heading it back this is Whelan Staunton well forward with the attack McMahon play on says Ray Lewis this is Nickel Forward by Hansen. Forrester being examined on that long high ball, as Trevor mentioned. Oh, well played by Nickel back into Whelan. This is Houghton, and it's a corner. Beardsley calling for it to be pulled back. This is Barnes. McMahon feeds it in. Walker not really away. Barnes again. Aldridge hovering on the far side. They've got problems with Barnes. Terry Wilson clears for another corner. And Barnes looks to me to be in mercurial form. And all the action in this opening period is at the Nottingham Forest end. Ten minutes have gone. Liverpool lead 1-0. Aldridge hands on hits on the six yard line and the referee is saying the corner must be taken from the other side so Ray Houghton has gone trotting across two linesmen by the way are David Axel of South End and John Brandwood of Litchfield that's David Axel over just supervising the corner kick now Staunton's gone to help Houghton Neil Webb with the header out not very far. Staunton again. Forrest can't clear their lines. They're being penned back in. Lee Chapman. Only to Hansen. Good challenge by Steve Hodge. It needed something like that for Forrest. They're just not getting to the ball as quickly as Liverpool. Hansen again. Commanding stuff this early on. from the team chasing the double. Staunton. Forrest don't seem to be able to get possession. McMahon. Good running by Peter Beardsley through the inside right position and then by Houghton further out. Liverpool's movement off the ball, always an education. Barnes. 
and <laughs> Forrester backpedalling. Walker and Wilson are really stretched at the moment because Beardsley is full of movement up there and they're pulling them one way and then the other and now Whelan's made a run and they've got to cover him now and Wilson gets the head to it. McMahon tucks it inside to Houghton and then it goes to Whelan and Houghton again to Aldridge. And they can't get out of their own half, Nottingham Forest. Staunton, Whelan, Houghton, to his right, Beardsley. <laughs> Just moving around from one red shirt to another, Barnes. Now at last, Forrest, break it all up. Tommy Gaynor it was who got a foot in and gets the return from Clough. Robillard thought about coming and went back quickly. It's Gaynor on the ball. McMahon got to him. Gaynor got it back, Barnes helped out. And that's McMahon again. And the crowd warming to every challenge. Really good competitive play. Steve McMahon, as Forrest got out of their own half for almost the first time. Brian Laws to take the throw. Webb. And again. Chapman's waiting in the centre. This is Wilson. Pierce. Handball, Chapman. Well, that was uh, one of the few occasions, what, in 13, 14 minutes that Nottingham Forest have been able to string three or four passes together. It, it's one of those situations where, as a Nottingham Forest player, you think to yourself, well, I've only had two or three touches and the, the game's already almost a quarter of an hour underway. And what they need is just to take breath, get a few of those touches and, and regain that confidence that has just knocked them completely out of their stride since the goal. That was the first goal, by the way, that Forest have conceded in the FA Cup this season. They'd kept a clean sheet in every other round. And Steve Sutton, who'd kept all those clean sheets, would probably feel a little hard done by that it came the way it did after he made a good save. He'd been uh, virtually impregnable up to that point in the uh, competition. quarter of an hour gone here at Old Trafford in the FA Cup semi-final if you joined us late in fact the match was late starting anyway but if you missed the kickoff and the early moments Liverpool lead 1-0 the goal scorer Aldridge with a header after Barnshot had been saved 1-0 the score Pierce Parker comes inside Ray Houghton Chapman in the centre waiting good club this is away by Hansen Barnes with the header on Beardsley for Forrest Webb Parker it's a beautiful day here in uh, Manchester and it'll be very warm down there for the players there's no question about that Walker Hodge Webb, good move by Forrest this, very good move, Hodge again. Gainers and Laws. Oh. the short ball game so effectively Liverpool at times that's uh, one of the uh, strengths of their great experience gathered uh, in big matches of all kinds this is Barnes but uh, Webb to Clough McMahon again so good in the tackle gets it back from Houghton shakes off the challenge of Hodge, Aldridge the only man up ahead of him so he's got to wait for Steve Nicholl, the Footballer of the Year 
and even he isn't Superman. Hansen. Ablett. And now Whelan. Careless bit of play by Barnes for once. This is Webb. And it's Chapman. Offside, Tommy Gaynor. Just beginning to come that little bit into the game now, Nottingham Forest. Get one or two passes in midfield, because it's in midfield where Liverpool took that grip. Steve McMahon and Ronnie Whelan never letting them settle on the ball. And, and they're hustling Nigel Clough, who, who of course has that sort of role of dropping deep and allowing the Hodgen Webb to sort of take the space that he's created. Yes, that's interesting. He, he is actually coming into McMahon and Whelan territory there, and, that, and they're, as you say, bustling him out of it at the moment. This is Staunton. And Walker with the header back. Just Walker, the 23-year-old England defender. This is Ablett. Liverpool have got plenty of time to work the ball across their back four. They're strolling through it, really, at this stage. Forrest are not pushing up quite that far. They're just forming their line a bit further back. But Liverpool's passing is so good normally that they can work themselves out of that area, given time. Forrest fans don't like it, but... Uh, here's Parker. Webb. Clough. And again, it's McMahon snapping at his heels. Foul, surely, this time. McMahon kicks the ball away. Petulant. Ray Lewis doesn't want to have to resort to the yellow card today if he can avoid it. But McMahon did commit the foul, and it is a free kick. And uh, Pierce will take it. And uh, as the conversation goes on, Wilson has made his way up. And Grobelar is arguing with his defenders at the moment. He's a long way out. This is Webb. Laws and now Beardsley. It's broken for Liverpool and of course there's movement on both sides. It's Ablett who's broken from the back on the left. Gary Ablett, the number two. Brilliant run. Laws got to him. Corner. It's the fluid Liverpool style. Ablett the man to lead the charge. Barnes. Liverpool have only got Aldridge and Beardsley in the penalty area at the moment. 20 minutes gone in the first half. Houghton, Barnes, and a corner again. They don't need to pack people in there when they can work the angle like that. 20 minutes then. And I think Des Walker was the player hurt there. He blocked the uh, attempted cross. Kenny Dalglish, who was a spectator at uh, Main Road yesterday, a match I saw, quite extraordinary game between uh, Manchester City and Bournemouth, which uh, people in Manchester are still talking about, actually, this morning. But uh, in this match at Old Trafford, Steve Sutton beaten after four minutes by Aldridge. 1-0 to Liverpool. Barnes takes the corner, it's floated. Nickel and Aldridge up together, this is McMahon. And this is Staunton. Good strike by Steve Staunton. And, uh, and big Jack Charlton's quite pleased, just to think uh, he's been get forcing his way in the Republic of Ireland side, and he's a good attacking fullback. I mean, him on one side and Stevie Nickel the other is as good a pairing as you could wish to have. Yes, they're keeping the likes of uh, Venison and Burrows out of the side at the moment. Well, Staunton certainly is, having uh, forced his way into the team. This is Barnes, offside Aldridge. Steve Staunton, who has already been capped uh, by Jack, as you say, and uh, Liverpool produce another highly promising young player. Here's Lee Chapman for Nottingham Forest. Parker...
Laws tucks the ball in. That was McMahon, and this is Barnes. Oh, he's skated past Laws. He's got three the other way for Liverpool. Staunton's made the run from left back here. Houghton in a great position if he can be found. Wilson scrambles the ball away. But the left side of the Liverpool team was where Forrest were really taken apart on their right, that is, in last year's semi-final, and Barnes is starting to do it again. Steve Staunton got up with John Barnes there again, and, and at the moment, Staunton and Nicola are getting forward so much that Tommy Gaynor and Gary Parker are, are having to defend back in their own half, and they're never getting forward to support Nigel Clough and Lee Chapman, and, and unless those two wide midfield players can get the two Liverpool fullbacks going back towards their own goal, Nottingham Forest is going to struggle to get into this game. Absolutely, it's been dominated the opening 25 minutes or so by Liverpool. We seem to have uh, time and space. That's Staunton, a long ball, and Beardsley's got the other side of Wilson. Aldridge is in the middle, it's still Beardsley, it's still Beardsley. In fact, Aldridge and Houghton were waiting then. tactic has caused problems doesn't it to the uh, Des Walker and, and Terry Wilson there's, there's no doubt the goals they conceded against Everton have, have been watched by Kenny Dalglish and it's a tactic he's decided that they're going to try and exploit today. That's right one of the few games Forrest have lost in recent times was at Wimbledon 4-1 and I remember Don Howe telling me that uh, Wimbledon's uh, long ball game gave Forrest great concern that day. They're on the attack now though with Pierce, Parker Webb trying to bring some method to the Forest play. This is Pierce. Webb again. Now Clough, a nice little turn. Tommy Gaynor out right. Miss hit it. He's doing his, his level best to get amongst it there and uh, break up Liverpool's play and rhythm. What a good bit of play again by Barnes and Staunton and Beardsley helps the ball on. Staunton continued his run. Foul. By Beardsley. For any uh, latecomers, Liverpool lead 1 0 in this semi final. The score of John Aldridge after four minutes. This is Webb for Forrest. whether you're eating your Sunday lunch or whether you've delayed it today you can't take your eyes off this for very long it's offside against uh, Beardsley not the first time a semi-final has been played at this time of day there was the uh, similar situation was it two years ago Coventry and Leeds this is Webb to get the ball out to Barnes whenever possible and you can understand why Webb that's a good turn by Neil Webb Chapman look at McMahon in there again Barnes drives it forward that was a terrific ball for Aldridge he's got away from Terry Wilson Pierce has gone across as the cover good piece of fullback play that by the England left back and John Barnes delivery from that deep left half position quite superb he put Aldridge in the clear Here's Barnes again. To 
smashing past that. Barnes again, he's dragging it back. Hodge tries to... Yes, he does clear it to Chapman. Again, but he's been beaten by Houghton, Staunton, McMahon... Hanson. Again, the play strung out in the Nottingham Forest half. That's been the pattern. Good ball again. Barnes to Staunton. Beardsley couldn't reach it. Houghton could. Walker. Parker. They're not clearing the ball well, Forrest. It's going back to a Liverpool player all the time. Nickel. better from Neil Webb, he has shown one or two good touches, Gaynor, <laughs> Nigel Clough and Ray Houghton, Pierce, Parker, Aldridge looks for Nicol, Walker across. This is Gaynor. I think the uh, temperature down there on the pitch is uh, very high and I would think the heat may affect the way this game is being played. I honestly think it's Liverpool particularly is slowing it down because the shirt sleeve crowd reflecting just how hot it is here in Manchester and uh, these players could be out there for quite a while uh, if you think that there could even be extra time today but um, Liverpool have got a reason to conserve energy. They're one up having scored after four minutes. almost like watching a World Cup match in uh, the middle of summer at the moment. Well, we've been playing half an hour. And the feature of this opening half hour, the combination here on the left of Staunton and Barnes. Broken up this time by Webb. Up here in the commentary position, it's 76 degrees. So uh, what it's like on the pitch, I don't know, but Trevor Brooking and I have both got our jackets off because uh, it's real cricketing weather, this Trevor. Well, it is, and uh, I can assure you it's not that Forest will be feeling the more time because Liverpool have played great possession football. And when Nottingham Forest just have to run around without getting a touch of the football, I can, I can assure you, you feel a lot more tired. But here's a touch for Clough. That was the first hint of an opening for Nottingham Forest. And Liverpool's defence parted a little bit there in front of Grobelar. Here's Hansen. That was the first sight Forrest had really had of the Liverpool goal, and uh, Nigel Clough was very quick to get his shot in, I must say. This is McMahon. Nickel. Barnes. He's coming inside this time. Beardsley. Hodge stepped in. Well... Stuart Pearce has decided to 
run into the forest attack, make an extra man up there. Number three. Clough. Good ball. Tucked back in by Gaynor to Chapman. Staunton. For Liverpool. I've seen uh, some spectators affected by the heat and uh, it's noticeable how quickly the first aid uh, facilities have been uh, activated. There's Chapman. Oh, McMahon made a mistake and Clough couldn't quite get there and Webb had a deflection and that's gone in. It's a goal for Nottingham Forest. Grubbelar, I think, was deceived by a deflection from Webb's shot and Forest are level in the 33rd minute. It came from the throw-in, and this was unexpected. Lee Chapman got a McMahon's error, really. It comes back to Webb, he strikes it against the post and over the line. Grobelaar couldn't grab it, Trevor. I would have thought Bruce Grobelaar saw it very late. It came through a, a lot of legs there, and a good strike by Neil Webb. And of course, uh, it was a long throw-in, which in fact, in fact brought Nottingham Forest back into the semi-final last year. They, they got Nigel Clapp a toe in then. But Liverpool will be uh, a little bit shell-shocked because having played so well to suddenly find themselves level uh, will be very disappointing. Well, this was what Nottingham Forest really needed, a goal out of nothing. It struck by, I'm sure that was deflected, but anyway, it's a goal. Robillard either was unsighted or deceived by a deflection, but anyway, he couldn't get it down by the post, and it's 1-1, and that's put this semi-final into just the sort of perfectly balanced position that you would want as a neutral. Barnes crossed, oh, against the bar, Aldridge. What a match we've got here now. It's come to life in the last couple of minutes. Beardsley, Houghton, John Aldridge hit the bar in that last attack. So close to his second goal and to restoring Liverpool's lead within a couple of minutes of Forrest equalising. But here come Forrest again with Pierce thundering forward Parker this is Nickel Cross again, and Barnes, it hit his own player, Aldridge. Barnes. Just uh, testing my memory a bit, a bit here, but I think we've seen Forrest come back Three big cup ties now from being a goal down. This is Gaynor. It's a good run by Tommy Gaynor, but he couldn't find Parker. Nickel was there instead. They, I think they conceded the first goal in the Littlewoods and the Simard Cup finals, and again today. But one of the things about Brian Clough's team is they don't change their pattern. Although they had a lot of defending to do, they got their game together, started to pass the ball around a bit, and they're level. Laws. Wilson, and it's Liverpool who are panicking a bit now. I still think when we look back on that, but here's Liverpool. We'll look back in a minute. Ablett, Aldridge is going forward through the middle. There he is. I still think, Trevor, when we look back on that Forest goal, you know, I think Steve McMahon made a mistake in defence 
uh, prior to the ball coming out to Webb. There was certainly a miskick in there somewhere, but uh, this is a bit of magic by John Barnes, and a header by Aldridge in against the bar. Seven and a half minutes left in the first half. Liverpool one, Nottingham Forest one. Aldridge for Liverpool, Webb for Forest, and then Aldridge against the bar. All very exciting. And most of that excitement being produced by Barnes. Gaynor has to come back again. I remember, it seems an age ago now, but, uh, in our Sports Night programme, Don Howe uh, previewing this semi-final, making the point that uh, the long throw, as Trevor Brooking said, which caused Liverpool to concede a goal in last year's semi, has worked again here for Forrest. The long throw and the flick on, and the little panic that ensued, gave Webb the opening. McMahon. This is Staunton, and this is Barnes. These two have a telepathic understanding now. But Beardsley obviously hasn't for the moment. This is Parker. Pat Parker bustled out of it by Steve Nicholl, and again they look for Aldridge on that through ball. Beardsley. Oh, look at that round the back again. Not a, not a particularly good cross by his standards, but uh, again he found space on the outside. That's a foul by Hansen on Clough. McMahon is again angry. Just think Steve McMahon is so hyped up, Trevor, for this game that he's just letting his uh, feelings run away with him a couple of times. I think referee Ray Lewis is doing very well. He's just trying to take the sting out of it. Actually, enough, there's a lot of tension and a bit of frustration, I think, from Steve McMahon that they've conceded that goal just when they seem to be controlling the match. Well, that's what makes football the wonderful game that at its best it is. You just can't tell. It was uh, very much Liverpool's match for nearly half an hour. Now there are five minutes left in the first half and it's anybody's game. Chapman this is Nickel again he's looking for that long through ball to test out Walker and Wilson Pierce semi-final with the supporters playing their full and proper part here and Hansen finds Beardsley well, they always say it's a good time to score just before half time I would have thought any time's a good time to score but uh, there you go it's one of those things people say this is McMahon Here's Houghton, McMahon again. Oh, he's in! No, cover from Laws. Well played, though. Well, Steve Sutton didn't have a lot of luck on the goal, but he got a bit of luck when Aldridge hit the bar, so perhaps uh, that's evened itself out a bit at that end. Three minutes left in the half. In the FA Cup semi-final, Everton are waiting the winners. Liverpool won, Forest won. It has to be settled today. 
forward by Hansen. Beardsley with Wilson, free kick to Forrest. What are your overall impressions of this half, Trevor? There's no doubt Liverpool controlled the game for the first half an hour and Nottingham Forest were, were having problems you know, getting into the match. And really, although we criticise Liverpool perhaps for not getting that long throw away, I think we should give uh, Neil Webb a lot of credit for the strike because uh, remember one of the earlier rounds at Watford, he hit one from outside the area and uh, on that occasion again today, left foot and he hit it well, although Bruce Grobler would have seen it late, he, he didn't appeal Bruce when the referee gave the goal, so it was certainly over the line. And, and it has transformed the game, there's no doubt Nottingham Forest now have got that little bit more confidence uh, and an extra yard I think in pace now since they've got that equaliser. It was Barnes, and this is Beardsley, mistake by Walker for a moment, Aldridge is in, the whistle's gone already before the appeal for a penalty, I would say offside there, or else a push, but the Liverpool player was penalised before we even got into an argument about Pierce coming in behind him. The flag was up. And I would suspect there was a case for offside. Houghton. They're just trying to jab that through ball all the time. Either side of the uh, centre-backs. Webb. McMahon. Free kick. And now they're squaring up. Well, there's a buzz going round Old Trafford after what we've seen, particularly in this last ten minutes. The game changing course. And with a minute to go in the half, Nottingham Forest look as though they'll go in level. Offside, offside, the flag's up. Again the long ball from Hansen, and again the header by Wilson, Webb, Tommy Gaynor, it's Ablett, Time being added on now for stoppages by Ray Lewis at the end of this first half. And there won't be much of that. So, half time in the FA Cup semi final. Liverpool won, Kenny Dalglish's team off to a flyer, but Nottingham Forest coming back on 33 minutes to level things, after that Liverpool hit the bar, plenty of activity, plenty of incident, the score's level. Well, splendid half, football in the sun, everybody enjoying themselves, this is what it should be all about, Jim. It was worth waiting 15 minutes for, wasn't it, an extra one? <laughs> Absolutely, even Stephen. Uh, I would say that Liverpool it. had the edge in that first half, as, as Trevor did, I mean, they made most of the running and they had uh, Forrest on the rack for most of it, but... When that happens and you've done all that huffing and puffing and playing really well, Barnes has been in delightful form and uh, it's a pleasure to say it really about Liverpool because we have watched cup ties where we didn't think they did all that well. But today, a pleasure to see them produce the kind of football they've been producing. The danger from their point of view, they've let Forrest back in the game and over the last 15 minutes or so, they're still attacking but I think they might run out of puff and Forrest will come stronger because Liverpool have had the edge and, not, and are not leading. So you know, um, if, you, if you were measuring at half-time, I'd say that enables Forrest perhaps to okay. turn it the other way in the second half. Thanks. Uh, two goals to look back on and a couple of attempts as well. We'll do that uh, in a moment or two. But for the moment, let's look back on some of the splendid goals that the FA Cup Series has provided this year.
goal for Gills, we have Tracker. A splendid goal. Snowden. Clark. Corbett. Barnes, beautifully done, and that's number two, Ian Rush to score. Side now, still car, <laughs> still car, launch. Oh, what a good goal! That was Robson, and this is Hughes. That's a wonderful finish. Hello, was up in the air post. And coming in from behind with an excellent goal was Terry Feeler. Ball by Dean to Bryson. Taking a little player, Bryson. And that's the equalizer. Dean has done it. Pressure from McMahon and Houghton, and there's four Liverpool players on this break. They don't get offside. It's Beardsley. Aldridge is in the middle. Oh, Beardsley, brilliant! Unbelievable! McCall, the space here. Cotty. Little turn. Sheedy. Everton, of course, waiting for the winners here today. Forest Liverpool 1 1 at half time. Take a close look at this. You don't see shirt sleeves in Manchester that often. <laughs> but uh, what a great start for Liverpool today. A wonderful start, really. It was uh, brought about a little bit by Nottingham Forest defensive uh, mix up, rather reminiscent of the European Championship. You remember when England lost the first goal against Ireland? Two players yes. went for one ball and they couldn't recover after that. Exactly the same thing here. You'll see it's Gaynor back trying to do a defensive job on Barnes. And as this long cross comes over, he and Laws j both jump in to, to get together, knock each other over and give Barnes the chance for that be beautiful shot. Great save Wonderful there, save. Mm. Unlucky in a way that it bounced back to Aldridge. But when you're a goal scorer like he is, um, that's what happens. The ball Gaynor comes back to was only doing his job here, though, wasn't it? it has to be oh, he was coming back. To come back yeah. But just watch to see which one had it first. He should have said, right, your ball. Look, he's come and jumped into his own player. There's no Liverpool player there. Now there is. Barnes with the shot. And you can see how, if you're a 24-goal-a-season man or yeah. more, 
the ball comes back to you. If you're not, it goes somewhere else. That's one of the most extraordinary things about a score like Aldridge. Straight One-way traffic for the following 20 minutes, more or less. Yes, with some delightful Liverpool football. I mean, really delightful stuff. When they played around first time like that and dictate the game and Barnes on yeah. song, I mean, yeah. doing wonderful things. But Mahn, who's been in trouble two or three times, he's just a little too aggressive, but he's dominated the middle of the field there and done extremely well. And then, of course, Webb's goal to really create a match for us. It was rather like a good gin and tonic. He hit the spot. He did hit the spot, yes. yes. Well, I'll, I'll try and have one of those and sample it, but I, I remind you, I'd, I'd almost as soon hit one of these left foot shots that he hits here um, than have a gin and tonic. A lot of power, really, on the half volley. Now, my verdict on that is because, in my view, Grobler is an honest man, and if you look at his reaction when he came up from that, it said, all right, I, you, I should have got there, I didn't, it was a goal. He wouldn't want to cheat, Bruce Grobler, he's a man. It was in the lane, 1-1. Yeah, one, one. Yeah, yeah. Right, let's for a moment move down to the, I think, the tunnel area. Tony Gubber has with him one of the great heroes of Old Trafford, of course, Bobby Charlton. Well, Bobby, a word about one or two individual performances, first of all. John Barnes. Well, John Barnes, every time he got the ball, he's such a fast player, he, he took the fullback on, he got created loads of space and was able to provide a, a brilliant service for his forward players. Uh, but. But all the service that's been coming to the front players, to Beardsley and to Aldrich, has been quick. And the first 20 minutes, 25 minutes, Forrest couldn't get in the game because they were so competitive. And, of course, they got the first goal from it. Because the thing but, is, Liverpool are always prepared to put their foot in and win the ball as well, aren't they? People like McMahon. Well, yeah, he fell out with a few people out on the field there, uh, Steve McMahon. But that's the way they play. They play mark, they mark tight, they put the foot in, they win the tackles. And it's the ones that want to win it that usually do. And the first 20 minutes or so, it was all Liverpool and you couldn't see Forrest getting into it, but as it progressed slightly, you, you started getting Webb finding a little bit more time, Club starting to lay a few balls off and, and suddenly Forrest, with their little bit of luck, you know, well it was a good shot like, but uh, got back into it. But to see really good players and class players playing at the best in a fantastic atmosphere like we got out here, it's a pleasure really and there's so many good performances. There isn't anyone on the field that you could say actually has played badly all played to the full potential. It's played at a, a, not a frantic pace, but two very, very well-disciplined sides. And at the end of the day, the one that holds the discipline may be the ones that win it. Put your, put your, put your head out. Which one of the two? I've no idea. I've no idea. They're class players on either side. And, and I'm just letting it unfold in front of me and hope that, uh, hope that it's a really good game. And there are more goals in it. But it's, it's a, a classic cup tie. Brilliant. Thanks very much, Bobby. Well done, Bob. Nobody's got an idea. That's why it's so fascinating. But um, that Aldridge-Barnes combination nearly worked it again, didn't they? Later yes, on. it did. Mm. It was, uh, that was one of the magic moments of Barnes, really. The dribble, the way in which he made the space here to get the cross in. There you are. Little wriggle around the other side. He's equally two-footed, then a back heel, and he swings the cross in here. Pace, curving, and, and really Aldridge was unlucky there. He did a lovely low dive to push it in the top right-hand corner and couldn't quite just make enough contact to see it go where he wanted. But uh, lovely, Barnes at his best, and uh, good news for England as well. If, he, if he's gonna be as inspirational as this, and as confident as he is today, um, then of course, you know, he's unstoppable, and he's worth his place in any team. But uh, somehow- He's more feel for playing for Liverpool right now than he's perhaps ever had in the past because of incident. Uh, they're able to give him the ball in the clear just a little bit more so that he can get into his stride. His problem when he plays for England and when he's marked, close marked by continental defenders is they stand right on him and he can't get into his stride. But today when he's in his stride, there's no better sight in football. All right, uh, match facts. We've got one or two uh, for you, which will go on the screen. Goal attempts uh, for Liverpool, 4-3, corners 5-1. Fouls 8-4. Well, McMahon's been involved in a few of those today. 4-3 uh, offside. And, of course, the important part is that uh, it's 1-1 one, one in goals. Who else has stood out for you in this first half, do you think, Jim? Uh, who stood out for me? Beardsley I've... worked so hard. Yes, yes. Beardsley, my worry about him as an international player and a Liverpool player is his stamina. And I, I think he tries so hard to get the ball back when his team have lost it. He's always making runs. I think he runs out of steam because he's such a willing horse. I don't think he's physically that strong to do it for 90 minutes. But we shall see this half. It'd be interesting to see how much Peter Beardsley comes into this game. Thanks, Jim. Just a reminder, we could have extra time here today. We could have penalties to decide who gets to win. Right now, it's back to Trevor and first John. Thanks very much, Des. Um, Rosalind Forest players being welcomed by the supporters back onto the pitch. And uh, 
as Stuart Pearce leads them out. And they'll be reflecting, no doubt, that uh, their dream of three cups in one season is still alive, and Liverpool's of the double, obviously, stands as well at this stage. Just a reminder of who the substitutes are today, because that could come into play uh, later on. Ian Rush is one of the subs, and it would be interesting, Trevor, to see at what point Kenny Dalglish might think about using him if the score stayed level or they went behind. It really depends how the flow goes. I mean, he came on for John Aldridge in the Merseyside derby, but I mean, John Aldridge does look more like his old sharp self today. And it'd uh, be very interesting to see, you know, just whether the heat does take this thing out of some of the players and, and all four subs are used. Yes, John Aldridge scored twice in the semi-final against Forrest last year. He's got one today and hit the bar, so he's not the kind of fellow you'd uh, take off without serious thought, is he? That's uh, Gary Ablett and uh, here's Terry Wilson. Webb. Gaynor. Liverpool now playing right to left, attacking the Stretford end, as it's known here. told that the crowd is around the 38,000 mark. There's an indication that uh, 13,000 tickets were not taken up for this match. That's Walker. That's a free kick. It was a foul by him on Aldridge. The two Nottingham Forest substitutes are two youngsters, Lee Glover, 19, and Phil Starbuck, 20. Getting the vote over Franz Carr, among others. Webb. This is Whelan. And now McMahon. Staunton. Barnes. side to McMahon and this is Beardsley Staunton Gaynor and Barnes tangling it's all a bit tight there Staunton for Liverpool. It'll run on for Houghton. Shot struck Walker. Nickel. Really good play by Steve Nickel. It was over the head of Aldridge from Steve Nickel, but uh, it caused Forrest a little bit of a panic. Here's Webb. It's uh, 30 years since Nottingham Forest actually reached an FA Cup final, 1959, and Brian Clough has never reached one as a player or a manager in some 35 years in the game. Hansen, the man on the ball, is playing his 11th FA Cup semi-final match this afternoon. Just goes to show the amount of uh, times Liverpool have been involved at this stage in recent years. Here's Whelan. Some of those were replays, of course, which we won't be having this year. Chapman. Foul. Ray Lewis right next to the play there. Here's Neil Webb. Clough. Forward by Houghton. Barnes. Beardsley. On, good running. Beardsley again. 
gets the throw. Liverpool's fans at that end, hoping for the sort of start to the second half that they had to the first. It's going to be Steve Staunton with the throw. Barnes. Walker away. second half, it was Brian Laws who lost the place there for a moment, this is Whelan Nickel Hodge was snapping in a little bit, so was Parker trying to restrict Liverpool's movement there in midfield Pierce with the header Whelan Aldridge looking for Beardsley Walker wants the ball to run and Beardsley Settles for a throw. And in these almost sweltering conditions, uh, lovely for the crowd, but uh, as I said earlier, extremely hot for the players. This is Whelan. Houghton. Hansen finds McMahon. Liverpool again start to set their stall out in the forest half. Spread the play to Staunton. But that's uh, harmless. Kenny Dalgleish there looking very pensive, but uh, sure he's pleased that Liverpool have again started this half, really as they started the match, taking a grip. And uh, John Barnes, of course, probably the match star in that first half. But I think a lot of credit to Steve Staunton who wasted that cross but there's no doubt his support and his early pass to, passes to John Barnes do help him get possession earlier and cause the havoc well here's Barnes again Wilson didn't make that McMahon did this is Aldridge Houghton's in the penalty area there are several waiting to come in on it but Webb with McMahon Nickel Beardsley Nickel Steve Nickel still Appeals for handball against Stuart Pierce by Steve Nicholl, not given, corner. Nobody else appealed. Nicholl again. McMahon. You'll be disappointed, it's, it's not an easy one to hit uh, coming in late like that, but it, again it was a well-worked corner kick. It, you very very rarely see Liverpool take long corners they, they love to take those quick corners and, and get people coming into the penalty box late and that's what Steve McMahon did and he was just stretching for his volley and there's Brian Clough probably wondering where the person marking Steve McMahon was he's almost a face in the crowd today isn't he here's uh, Tommy Gaynor things taken care of pretty well further down there on the bench by people uh, like Liam O'Kane but Archie Gemmell on the staff as well of course former Forest player and Ronnie Fenton is uh, Brian Clough's assistant this is Clough Ablett and Staunton who's played so well at left back in uh, his first match of this uh, magnitude in many ways there may be some people that uh, came in at the end of the first half it's 1-1 uh, here in the semi-final Aldridge early on for Liverpool Webb for Forest after 33 minutes and uh, another Aldridge effort hit the bar but we still are no nearer to knowing who plays Everton in the final a week next Saturday that's a long ball by Staunton Aldridge climbing a bit on Walker well, more than a bit <laughs> Webb
Pierce looks for Chapman, but he's having a pretty tough time uh, trying to shake off the attentions of Hansen and Ablett. Barnes. Terry Wilson having a quick look up because Aldridge was cutting off uh, the back pass. And now it's Whelan. Danger here. Houghton's made a good run through, leaving it to the right to Nickel to uh, break outside. There he goes. Pierce is so good on cover. And Hodge, nice and tidy. Parker to Chapman. But he wanted a bit too long in his turning circle, really, there. And he'll be quite glad to get the free kick. Ten minutes gone in the second half. 1-1. One, one. And uh, Staunton again beats Tommy Gaynor. This is Barnes. Through the middle, Aldridge chasing. Mistake by Walker. Aldridge, great save Sutton. Aldridge again. Can he pull it back to Beardsley? No, he can't. Corner. That one actually would have been a better choice. He was screaming for it. But uh, it's so easy from up here. Sutton takes credit. Good save. How important we'll see. Here's Nickel. Nichols cross. Oh, and Sutton had to pour at it. Just got a hand. Staunton. Liverpool turning the screw. And Forrest get the ball away, but uh, that long ball through the middle again caught out uh, Des Walker. And John Aldridge got in behind him. Houghton. Houghton again. Oh, well played. Beardsley couldn't connect. Liverpool are threatening to do damage again. Whelan. Beardsley. Foul. Laws. Steve Sutton is a very busy man just now. McMahon. This is Barnes. What a great cross by John Barnes, headed away by Neil Webb, and the crowd seem to sense, the Liverpool section that is, that this could be the moment. There are times in matches when Liverpool quite distinctly move up a gear, and this is one of those moments now. Houghton. Barnes again. Houghton. Beardsley. Oh, it's got in! Tommy Gaynor couldn't stop Aldridge getting in. And Liverpool are back in front. Well, quite who that finally went in off. I'm not at all sure. Was very close to it, number seven, and Beardsley and Aldridge went in with him. Aldridge will claim it. It's Aldridge's goal, and it's got two in this semi final, two in last year's, and he's restored Liverpool's advantage. Gainers cross, 58 minutes, Aldridge again. As we said, Liverpool looked as though they were going to score. They were right on cue. Well, it was on the cards. And what a great cross again that brought the goal. A long ball now. Aldridge now on a hat-trick. Handball by Beardsley. Good header by Aldridge, actually, B. There were three of them up together, but he made it his. What an outstanding goal-scoring record John has got. A real scouser. And Nottingham Forest have to take some action. Tommy Gaynor has been pulled off. And Phil Starbuck, 20 years old, Nottingham-born, number 14, gets a chance in the semi-final. Nickel. Houghton. Oh. 
Trevor. Well, just time to take breath there, wasn't it? Because it, it's been an irresistible surge by Liverpool, really. It, the goal was inevitable. It was just a case of, of how long it was going to take before coming. A great spell of football, really. And they were getting through the Forest defence. Des Walker nearly conceded the goal win. The backspin of the through pass by John Barnes deceived him and Aldridge's shot was blocked. But in the end, John Aldridge got on the score sheet. A great header again. John Aldridge, who felt uh, the tragedy as keenly as anybody, being a, a true Liverpudlian. And uh, he's come back. And come back strongly. 15 minutes gone in the second half. Liverpool 2, Nottingham Forest 1, Barnes for Liverpool. Are we going to see an all Merseyside Cup final in 13 days' time? Or can Nottingham Forest drag themselves back yet again, as has been their habit in big cup ties? Clough. That's a long ball from Houghton, twice behind, I think, weren't they, in the Simon? And uh, this is a long way from being over yet. A lot of football to be played. It was almost as though, Trevor, here's Clough, it was almost as though the Liverpool supporters, in that three or four minutes leading up to the goal, were, were almost sucking the ball into the net at that Stretford end, you know. The Nottingham Forest just couldn't get out of their own half, really. Uh, I mean, there was such a spell of pressure. Uh, and really, this is a problem Nottingham Forest are going to have to get back in this match because at the moment they've got eight or nine men back at stages and, and really Lee Chapman is isolated up front. And until they start to get men forward and support him better, they're not going to get those half chances that in fact got them into the game in the first half. Well, a lot's been said about the bond between Liverpool and their fans. If ever the uh, backing got to the players on the field, that it certainly must have done in that uh, five-minute spell. The crowd turned up the volume. Liverpool turned on some terrific football and they're back in front. Nickel. And there's movement everywhere now in red shirts. Nickel again. And still Nickel. Aldridge is now very close to uh, a little unique, not unique, but a feat that hasn't been achieved for quite a long time, you know, because it's 31 years since a player scored a hat-trick in an FA Cup semi-final. This is Beardsley. More of that later. This is uh, Liverpool now really trying to capitalise on the lead. Should they do so with a third goal, then you would think that that would settle matters. Scarves being held up all around. Whelan. Well, Trevor, do you see Forrest be able to cope with this kind of support? And they're really up against it now, aren't they? The great, the great problem is, is really even worse than the first half, when that first... 30 minutes they couldn't seem to get any touches and, and now of course they brought Starbuck on on this right hand side it, it just makes you wonder something must have happened during the week to Franz Carr because you, you do feel his pace would have given them a, a, an out ball you know that has always been part of their system for the last year or two their success out Neil Webb in particular picks the pace of Franz Carr out and the fact that he, he wasn't on the bench you, you just wonder what's gone on during the week because I do feel he might have been just the type of player that, that would have enable them to perhaps edge back into this game but at the moment Liverpool are playing so well I think you've just got to sit back and enjoy the football that they're producing I think that's a very good suggestion actually <laughs> people at home are doing just that this is Starbuck and this is Barnes oh, just look at that he doesn't seem to be moving quickly <laughs> at the same time he shows a yard of clear space beyond the man that's trying to get the ball from him. It's a, almost a languid stride, and yet it carries him so effortlessly past the nearest player. This is Wilson. Oh, that was an important interception. Clough would have been onside there.
after what happened in the first half. We mustn't rule Forrest out. Not until Liverpool score again if they do. This is Wilson. As I've said uh, two or three times, they've shown considerable character in uh, cup matches already this season in uh, coming back when they've uh, looked to be out of it. And with 20 minutes gone in the second half, they're still battling away for Brian Clough. But they're 2-1 down. It's the Liverpool fans who are, at the moment, making the noise. Here's Pierce for Forrest. There are one or two Forest players who found it awfully hard to get into the game today. That's offside. I'm thinking of Chapman, of Parker. Even Nigel Clough, to an extent, is limited in how much he can affect the game. But they have a free kick here. Parker. Hansen looks to be... For a player who's been out all season, Trevor, very much back in his stride. Oh, it's great to see him, isn't he? He, he? he seems to have so much time, which is always a hallmark of a great player. And I, I think you mentioned some of the Forest individuals that perhaps haven't got into the game, but also the Liverpool back four have, have surged forward themselves and, and have helped set up attacks, whereas the Nottingham Forest defence haven't done so. They've been too busy defending. That's right. Wilson trying to attack now, they'll have to take a risk or two as the game wears on, of course. And uh, that will <laughs> increase the chances of a goal at either end, because if they leave themselves light at the back, then that long ball of Liverpool's will find them out again. Here's uh, Starbuck in the meantime. And Beardsley for Liverpool. Hodges at him. is Wilson and Clough finds Starbuck inside again to Clough that was nicely worked and Starbuck tries to get past Gary Ablett does a bit of shoving in the meantime actually young uh, Phil Starbuck does have a goal against Liverpool on his career record quite early in his uh, first team days he scored against them in a league match and Forrest would be mighty pleased if he could come up with something today Chapman the target there felt he was pushed by Alan Hansen this is Webb who's worked terrifically hard to keep Forrest in it Starbuck good match uh, Webb's had for Forrest McMahon it's that through ball again isn't it Trevor that they keep probing at that heart of that Forrest defence look at Houghton on the chase now from Barnes Aldridge has made his way into the penalty area on the far side. This is Houghton. Good little ball into Beardsley, trying to turn Hodge. Hansen. Worked the ball so well and so comfortably from one side of the field to the other. Barnes. And now it's McMahon. Look at the space Steve Nichols got over there. He's almost got the field to himself. Parker trying to shut it down now. And again, Nichols gets round the back. Pierce a good tackle. 
Leading by example, the Forest captain, he knows they're up against it here. And it's very hot to make the sort of recovery runs that some of the Forest players are having to make now. As Liverpool dictate the game. Houghton. Oh, well played. Brilliantly played. Beardsley! From a magic little series of tricks by Ray Houghton on the right-hand side. He was teasing Stuart Pearce first one way, then the other. Then he took on Steve Hodge, pulled it back, and Peter Beardsley will feel, Trevor, that he should have scored. I think he should have done it. To be fair to him, I, I think he got one of those unkind bobbles just as he was about to play it, and it just popped up, and it was more of a shinner over the top rather than the side foot he originally intended. But it, it would have been the opportunity to perhaps sew the game up at this stage and uh, he'll be thinking about that until that final whistle. He's not having the best of luck with his finishing at the moment, uh, Peter. He had a chance, didn't he, in the Merseyside derby in the week to uh, settle it in the second half. Anyway, it's 2-1 here. Alan Hansen has the ball. Liverpool have nearly all the possession. And it is so clammy down there, so humid, that Nottingham Forest are... The temperature's still up here of 76 Fahrenheit. Uh, Nottingham Forest are going to have to gasp for breath, really, as they chase around trying to cut down the space that Liverpool are utilising. still find their own player Aldridge that was beautifully done again oh and that's going to be an own goal is it Brian Laws and Liverpool may now be in the cup final Aldridge setting the play up with Beardsley Barnes didn't touch it Laws certainly did that's an own goal and it's 3-1 to Liverpool 72 minutes, cruel on Brian Laws. <laughs> well, the cut can hurt, can't it? It's the cut that cheers for Liverpool, but it's a wretched moment for Brian Laws. I've got a feeling he, he was responsible uh, for an own goal, perhaps uh, earlier in the week, I'm not sure, in, in, in the match against Millwall, but uh, certainly he turned that one in. And it's 3-1, and those supporters are celebrating the strong possibility now of Liverpool, after all the tribulations of the last three weeks, qualifying for the FA Cup final against their Merseyside rivals, Everton. 17 minutes left, 3-1 to the Reds, McMahon. Well, you've got to feel sorry for Steve Sutton, I suppose, to be beaten by your own player, Trevor. It was one of the defenders' nightmares, really. Uh, a, a cross coming right across the face of the goal there. And, uh, of course, when you're a fullback, it's always going to be on Brian Law's weaker foot. He's a right back, and it, it, he's going to have to make the clearance with his left foot. And just as he's about to do so, I think he hit the same bobble that it hit Peter Beersley when he missed that opportunity, because it did pop up. And uh, I think you'll find, if you speak to him afterwards, it was his left shin pad that will take the the blame for that particular goal but uh, it's one of those incidents unfortunately that uh, he'll remember and yeah. it'll take a few weeks to get over yeah, it was bad luck on Brian wasn't it because he was involved in that mix up on the first goal as well with Tommy Gaynor he's not had the best of fortune out there the right back and funnily enough uh, Chettle last year in the semi-final playing in that position didn't have the best of fortune either against Barnes it's on that side of the field where Liverpool have capitalised against Forrest but here's Starbuck Again. What a good match Staunton's had. I think he might almost be a candidate for man of the match. That's a good ball by Beardsley to Houghton. Aldridge in the centre, hovering around the penalty spot.
Hodge keeping Forrest moving keeping their chins up Pierce Association coming up with 15 minutes to go and Liverpool leading 3-1 I suppose uh, tomorrow morning's uh, follow-up stories will be about fixture congestion anyway this semi-final has still got a quarter of an hour to run Liverpool with so many matches to fit in now but they play Forest again in a rearranged league game on Wednesday night at Anfield Chapman That happened uh, last year, funnily enough, that uh, repeat fixture a few days after the semi. That was that night when Liverpool ran riot and won 5-0 in one of the best exhibitions ever seen. So, uh, <laughs> I wouldn't think Forrest the Rudish going there again. I'm sure not and Forrest would be pleased that you reminded them about that. Too. They're more concerned with what's going on down there for the moment. It's 3-1 against them. Clough, Whelan. And it looks as though Brian Clough's opportunity of reaching an FA Cup final may pass him by again. Having clinched two other competitions at Wembley in recent weeks, the hat-trick is fading now a little bit from Forest sights. McMahon. On the game, there's absolutely no question that Liverpool deserve to be in the lead that they've got. Good ball by Staunton, Walker. Chapman, Clough, that's better, Walker's through. Des Walker, who's never scored a goal for Nottingham Forest, could have made a name for himself in the semi-final, but so unused is he to being in that position, he spurned the chance. And I would have thought that with that may have gone Forest's last opportunity of staging what would have to be a dramatic recovery. He was clean through, he was onside, but he pushed that one wide of the post. The wrong player really to get to find himself in that position if it had been Clough or Chapman. Clough's penalised now. said that the two finalists will receive something like 37,000 tickets each this year so it seems as though Wembley will be packed with something like 75,000 Merseysiders on Saturday week that's always assuming Liverpool don't throw away a two-goal lead Forrest is still trying to snatch something out of what's a fairly forlorn situation but one goal and who knows Pierce Parker chance for the Forest fans to find their voices here they're attacking with uh, Chapman facing the throw these long throws have given Liverpool a bit of trouble Chapman again it's a corner. Wilson, Chapman and Hodge the line up there at the near post. And Grobelar and Wilson coming together. Peels for handball. Grobelar grabs it. Looks around. Staunton who they appealed against. Foul, Clough on McMahon.
3-1 to Liverpool, Aldridge 2 and an own goal by Laws, Webb for Forrest, Aldridge taking his total for the season to 27. Ten minutes left in the second half. Doesn't look now as though we shall need extra time or that uh, highly debatable penalty shootout. But it'll be interesting to see what happens about the cup final and uh, whether there'll be room for a replay or not. Still to be decided. That's Pierce. Webb. being uh, hustled by McMahon hasn't been perhaps one of the better days for the uh, England player at the back there Steve Nicholl though has looked uh, very much what the football writers say he is footballer of the year that's a good ball by Houghton and Beardsley a lovely dummy to set offside Aldridge is he? well in the end McMahon lost it as he tried to check I think Steve McMahon realised John Aldridge was offside and that's why he didn't release it. And I mean, we've seen some outstanding individual performances, but the, the feature of Liverpool's play has been their movement and their running off the ball. There's always one or two options for whoever's in possession and, and that's the real hallmark of any great side, to have two or three options to play the ball. Parker. Away by Hansen. Aldridge is now with Wilson. Barnes. I can't see Ian Rush getting on the pitch uh, or getting back into the side perhaps at the moment because Kenny Dalglish is uh, 11 out there and John Aldridge in particular have done the job for him. Ray Houghton's been so influential, so effective. Still putting uh, Steve Hodge in a corner there, Houghton. That's uh, young Lee Glover, only 19. Looks as though he'll get his chance. Lee Glover, who's uh, a Kettering boy, actually, and uh, suffered a, quite a serious injury earlier in the season when he was away with the Scotland under-21 squad in Norway. And uh, he'll get an opportunity now to restake his claim because he's coming off in place of... He's coming on, rather, in place of Gary Parker. So Forrest have taken off their two wide players, which as uh, Trevor Brookings said was a feature of the match. They couldn't get forward enough really because they were doing too much defending or having to. And they've replaced them with the two youngsters. That's the position. 3-1 to Liverpool. And the sting seems to have gone out of the match now, Trevor, really. Well, that third goal really did clinch it, and uh, and certainly the bench there, Ian Rush and Kenny Dalglish, as usual, standing up, and uh, he must be absolutely delighted with the performance because uh, Merseyside derby on Wednesday, they looked as if they were getting warm towards this semi-final. The sharpness seemed to be coming back, and today they've given them everyone a marvellous performance, and uh, really that Merseyside match now Saturday week is going to be a bit special on May the 20th. Always remember in 1986 when I saw that particular game, the feature of the day for me was watching all the sets of supporters in blue and red all going to the ground together. And I'm sure that's going to be repeated on May the 20th. There was a foul there, Trevor, by uh, McMahon on uh, Starbuck. The foot was raised. There was a bit of anger on the faces of the Forest players. And Ray Lewis has decided, and I have to say that McMahon has stretched the referee's patience a couple of times earlier, that he'll have to use the yellow card right at the end of this semi-final. I think Steve McMahon has uh, gone through a pretty emotional time and has been very fired up. And just once or twice, he's overstepped the mark. 
Referee's just telling Terry Wilson that uh, to keep the spirit decent. It's been well refereed this. Beardsley. There's five minutes to go in this semi-final now at Old Trafford. Liverpool lead Nottingham Forest by three goals to one and looks set fair for the second all-Merseyside FA Cup final in four years. Starbuck, Webb, but here's Hodge trying to stop that happening. Without success. Nickel. And now Ronnie Whelan. And the Forest legs are tired now, and Liverpool are running them into the ground. It's Nickel. Whelan's just behind him. They've got Aldridge, Barnes, and Beardsley in the middle. Beardsley. Five years, Brian Clough's been in the game as player and manager, but he doesn't seem to have much luck in the FA Cup, does he? Here's his son. Wilson. Is there life left yet in Nottingham Forest? Towards the end of this gruelling game for them now, really. Starbuck. Liverpool's economy of movement, such a feature. Laws. Starbuck. Good play this by Forrest, though. Nice and tidy. Hodge. They're going to fight it out right to the end. Webb. Pierce. Good looking ball, that. Okay, in making sure that Forrest don't capitulate. Ronnie Fenton down there as well. Archie Gemmel. They've still got a little bit of hope here. It's Clough to Hodge. But it's Beardsley tucking it across to Houghton. And now it opens up at the other end. With Steve Nicholl making another one of those inspired runs down the right flank. And Lee Chapman trying to get to him. And so is Des Walker. Holds it up for Beardsley. Now Houghton. Nichols stays to the right. They're walking around now, most of the players. It's sweltering down there. Whelan. Forest fans don't like this very much. There are two minutes to go. Any thoughts, Trevor? Well, it must feel disappointed, not the Forest and, and Brian Clough, of course, but I. I think we should uh, be a bit unfair if we didn't acknowledge that they've had a marvellous season themselves. They're a young team, two finals at Wembley and a semi-final of the FA Cup and uh, they'll be, look back and they've had a great season but certainly today belongs to Liverpool. of acceptance around the ground now as we enter the last minute of this FA Cup semi-final Chapman has the ball for Nottingham Forest who trail 3-1 Barnes for Liverpool this time can't find Aldridge well they said John Aldridge's place was under threat when Ian Rush came back from Juventus and that obviously was the case but uh, he's gone on scoring goals Laws, Starbuck, Webb, it 
is the time for one more typical John Barnes run. Brian Law is forcing him out this time. A few disappointed Forest fans will be leaving early. But that's a good little ball by Nigel Clough to Lee Glover. Chapman in the middle. Stoppage time. Still Glover. Played by McMahon. And Liverpool are through to the FA Cup final to play their Merseyside rivals Everton. Kenny Dalglish's team with a smile back on their faces and on those of the supporters who were able to come today. The end of a traumatic three weeks for them. But they wanted to play, they did play, and they put on an exhibition which was worthy of the club and of the FA Cup semi-final. The double is still a possibility for Liverpool Football Club, but for Nottingham Forest to come off with heads bowed the hopes of three cup finals in one season are over. Kenny Dalglish congratulating his players. And Old Trafford bathed in sunshine as Liverpool celebrate. A performance of which their supporters will be proud. picture really speaks more than a thousand words so does that one the bond between these people and Kenny Dalglish has never been stronger than it is now this is a really great scene Very meaningful to the players as well. Just look at that. So the warmth of the relationship on Merseyside between players and fans is underlined here at Old Trafford. Kenny Dalglish quite deliberately staying out till last. So the spirit of this great club lives on and Kenny Dalglish will lead his side out at Wembley alongside their Merseyside neighbours Everton on Saturday week, having beaten Nottingham Forest by three goals to one. Well, light after darkness for Liverpool Football Club, quite irresistible today. And Jimmy, they really reached the high spots in that match. Yes, obviously... It seems that the gap that they had has refreshed them physically and, and spiritually and they, they reach peaks that uh, I'd seen them only before reach against Nottingham Forest in that wonderful game where they won 5-0 in the league last year. Yes. And I said they'd taken the game of football to a higher standard than any league club had ever done in this country before. And we saw flashes of that today, which was, you know, it was a revelation and well, so enjoyable. One of the heroes yeah. of the day, of course, uh, John Aldridge, mm. and he's now with Tony Gubber. And we're gonna hear from Tony with John Aldridge right now. Come on, Tony, let's hear from John. Steve well, with us here, uh, Steve McMahon and uh, two goal John Aldridge. Very emotional occasion, obviously, John, and a tremendous performance by Liverpool. Yeah, I thought we played great. Uh, first half, especially, I thought, you know, we just eased off a bit towards the end and let him in. But uh, 
All due respect to the lads, like we come back in the second half and you know we got the two goals, which you know made the same. Sure. Steve, I think you're the man that Nottingham Forest love to hate today because it was a powerful performance by you in midfield. Oh, I don't mind that. I think um, winning was all important and um, that was what we aimed to do, win at all costs. And um, the lads played their hearts out and really we're happy with the 3-1. We, we should have settled it before half time, I think. But um, we believed in ourselves and we only had to keep going and we did all credit to everybody. We kept going. And one of the men who did it for you, of course, as he did in the semi-final 12 months ago, John Aldridge. Tell us about this one, John. Um, I don't remember much of it, actually. I remember Barnsley picking it up and having a shot. And uh, I've just followed in in case the goalie saved it. And uh, I've just got the rebound well. Yeah, but you say that, it made a tremendously quick reaction. Aye, aye, it's not bad. I'm happy with that. You're going over your head, aren't you? Aye, I've done well with my neck muscles, I think. Aye. And now the second one. Uh, I think Ray's done great here, yeah. yeah. Uh, he, he chipped the far post and I thought Peter was going to flick it off my head. And I've just got above him and, and just uh, got my head to it. Probably foul Peter there, I think, to score it. <laughs> It really is extraordinary, after all that has happened, that, that Liverpool do win the semi-final and now it's a, an all Merseyside final against Everton. Yeah, I think um, that's what everyone wanted. I think uh, probably in the country as well as ourselves. Uh, as you said, the Merseyside, yeah. I think. Merseyside deserves that. Yeah. We were at Goodison on Wednesday and uh, it was fantastic. So yeah. it's um, all credit to the city, really, not just Liverpool. It's Everton as well and um, they deserve uh, a lot of credit as well. There is a problem though because there is now a fixture pile up and it's very likely the FA at this moment are making the decision that the final would be decided on penalties if it's required because there isn't time for an FA Cup final replay. We're just to abide by that if that's the case. Um, I just hope that it's a great occasion. Uh, I'm sure it will be for the fans anyway. And um, whatever the outcome, you know, we'll enjoy it, I'm sure. sure. Steve? Yes, yeah, so well, decisions are made by the, the FA. So it's in, up to them, really. It's, it'd be a sad occasion if it does get decided on penalties, but we're there and let's hope it, it, it hasn't got to go to penalties. One team or the other wins it, and uh, we don't have to have Hopefully that dilemma. Because there's not only the FA Cup for Liverpool to, to look forward to, there's still the possibility and the real possibility of winning the Championship and doing the double. Well, that's right. I think we've got to concentrate on, uh, on the league games now. I know they're going to come thick and fast, but um, there's a lot of pressure off us. We've got to the final. We can enjoy that now and we can uh, concentrate on the league game. Because we play Forest Wednesday, which is going to be probably even more difficult. And uh, we've got to get on with it. Keep going. Well, on the evidence of that display in the semi-final, I think it'll be difficult for anybody to beat Liverpool. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers, Tom.